All right, so hi everyone. Um, thank you for having us uh, here at Data for History 2021. Um, my name is Zakia Collier and Sarah and I will be presenting on the Lincoln Lost Jazz Shrines Project, which is a collaborative project uh, between the Weeksville Heritage Center where I work and the Semantic Lab at Pratt um, that Sarah is a part of and we are both based in New York City. These slides uh, can also be found at the link that Sarah is going to drop in the chat. Um, and we'll get started with a little bit of background on the project partners. So Weeksville Heritage Center is a multidisciplinary museum that is dedicated to preserving the history of 19th century, of a 19th century African-American community called Weeksville in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and it, it was one of the uh, of America's many free black communities in uh, the 19th century. Um, in 2008, the Weeksville Lost Dry Shrines of Brooklyn oral history collection was born out of a 2008 research proposal documenting central Brooklyn's cultural legacy of jazz between the 1930s and the 1960s. Uh, WLJSB, which is how we shorten it, is a collection about the relationships between people and the local Brooklyn places that are called the Lost Jazz Shrines um, because they, most of them no longer exist um, um, and are largely uh, unrepresented in, in the record of jazz. Um, and all of these oral histories come from a uniquely African-American perspective. Um, prior to this partnership with the Semantic Lab at Pratt, uh, Weeksville Heritage Center made the collection accessible by creating an Omeka Classic instance, um, for which the link uh, Sarah will also drop in the chat. Um, and the transcripts themselves were in a number of uh, different states. Uh, some were transcribed, some were transcribed and described, some were described but not transcribed, some only had metadata, um, and so they were sort of in a lot of states. Uh, one or two of them were not digitized. Um, and so there was some work to be done to get them all uh, at one level of, uh, of, of accessibility. Um, and so I learned about uh, the Collections as Data Project, um, which is essentially a project that turns collections uh, into data um, and uh, um, at this time sort of created a index list of people and places that I recognized in the collection that were either multiple uh, mentioned multiple times or, um, or, you know, seemed like people that I recognized, you know, Miles Davis or Charlie Parker, um, and wanted to just get a good idea of like who was mentioned in this collection and uh, possibly how powerful it could be to bring these uh, people and places to the forefront. Um, and so I later found out about Link Jazz, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Um, but Link Jazz is based at Pratt Institute um, in the Semantic Lab at Pratt. Um, and it, this particularly interested me because of a connection between Weeksville and Pratt historically. Um, when uh, Weeksville, the uh, free black community from the 19th century was sort of out of people's memory for a few years. And um, when it was rediscovered, Pratt Institute students and faculty was a part of that rediscovery in the 1960s. Um, and so it was really cool to think and imagine uh, a, a sort of um, contemporary iteration of a collaboration between uh, Weeksville and Pratt. So the Semantic uh, Lab at Pratt is a research group from Pratt Institute School of Information, which serves as a test bed and an incubator for the development of novel methods and tools uh, for the application of semantic technologies to libraries, archives, and museums. And the co-directors for the Semantic Lab are Christina Patuelli and Matt Miller, um, who are both also professors um, in the School of Information. This, uh, the Link Jazz project, with, which I mentioned uh, before, started in 2014 and was the inaugural project of the Semantic Lab um, and was the inspiration for the Linking Lost Jazz Shrines project. Um, and it was innovative in its focus on creating linked data out of the content of the oral histories and capturing the people, people-to-people uh, -people relationships rather than uh, just creating linked data out of metadata, which had been done before. Um, and the Link 
jazz project originally consisted of traditional RDF linked data, which was held in a triple store. But once the Semantic Lab at Pratt um, was launched, the Link Jazz project was migrated over to the Semantic Lab at Pratt's Wikibase instance. And we will talk about uh, Wikibase shortly. All right, so the two uh, institutions came together, uh, Weeksville Heritage Center and the Semantic Lab at Pratt. Uh, linking Lost Jazz Shrines, uh, as I mentioned, is a collaboration between the two, um, using the oral history collection as source material to, for creating linked open data. Um, and by transforming valuable information from the oral histories into linked open data, um, the Linking Lost Jazz Shrines project will make these collections and connections they provide more discoverable and accessible to the Brooklyn community and jazz researchers who would benefit from the significant resources um, in the nearly lost jazz culture of central Brooklyn. Um, and the collaborative intentions were to sort of, uh, from the beginning, transfer uh, transition the collection from Omeka Classic to Omeka S and cooperatively enhance the Link Jazz ontology to create music, uh, to integrate music groups and uh, music venues, which uh, there are, uh, there is a, a lot of them in the collection. Um, in the first round of the, uh, we had two rounds of funding and we're currently in the second round. Um, we created a workflow for data management and linked data creation. Um, and prepared to create linked data triples through the uh, sem Semantic Labs uh, CELAB tool, which we'll talk about in a second, um, and created documentation for the project. Um, in addition to programming um, in uh, virtual programming uh, to introduce the project to uh, the local community. In phase two, we focused on putting our workflow into action and um, and doing QA, ensuring property, proper entity identification, creating triples, um, and, and we're planning to export the data from the CELAB tool into Wikibase. Um, here you could just sort of see the um, original 12 predicates that were used by the Link Jazz project. Um, and six of these pre predicates were from the relationship ontology, one was from the music ontology, and five were minted specifically for this project. Um, and the link data uh, powers the link jazz data visualization, um, which you can find on, on the Semantic Lab um, page. You can also see the URLs at the top of this page. Um, and the Semantic Labs transition from its original triple store to Wikibase provided an opportunity to adjust and expand the linked data model. Um, one of the first needs was to be able to incorporate music group. Um, and this slide just shows how the five predicates were adjusted when added as properties into, uh, to the Wikibase in order to be able to use the class music group. The other main class we needed to integrate was, uh, incorporate was music venues um, to enable to include the Lost Jazz Shrines. Um, and for this purpose, we have five new properties uh, that can be used between person or music group and venues um, in order to relate the two. Um, and you can see some of those new properties um, on the right side of your screen. Um, and then lastly, sort of before um, starting to create new items in Wikibase, we had to ident identify which entities already existed um, from previous uh, Link Jazz projects um, uh, and, and uh, collections that they had used. Um, the index that I had compiled, uh, just listing all of the entities that we're interested in, um, um, we compared it, it compared it to what we found through our work uh, with linking lost jazz shrines, and you can sort of see uh, some crossover here. Thanks, Akia. Um, I'm going to talk about technology and workflow. Um, first, I wanted to talk about Wikibase. Um, so, the Semantic Lab at Pratt, as with Zakia mentioned, transitioned from the triple store, which stored the data for the Link Jazz project, into a Wikibase. 
And with traditional RDF linked data, the components of a triple are the subject, predicate, and object. But in Wikibase, these things are called the item, property, and value, respectively. Next slide. Uh, Wikibase um, provides the ability to upload data quickly via quick statements and also query the data via the query service. But one of the huge technological advantages we found is the possibility of easily adding qualifiers and references to contextualize a given statement. So for example, here we have Kwesi Mensawali be having the employer of the East, but we can, we can contextualize and qualify that statement by saying that Kwesi had the role of booking agent at the East. Next slide. The, the tool that we wanted to highlight is the Sela V tool, which is a, a tool created by the Semantic Lab at Pratt co-director Matt Miller, which has the intention of creating linked data from documents. And the linked data created from Sela V will be added into Wikibase. So Sela V itself has a little process. It will allow a user to load a document, clean up the document, block the document into smaller chunks of text, uh, send that text for NER named entity recognition, reconcile those NER outputs with existing Wikibase items, and then create linked data triples and export those to Wikibase. Um, also worth mentioning, if the document is not a PDF text file, but rather an image of a text, the integrated Pomodoro OCR tool can also help extract text from those complex documents and then feed it back into the Sela V process. Uh, next slide, please. As far as our workflow is concerned, the first step is to identify which entities we care about. Um, so we, for ease of visually scanning the documents, we, we made these uh, entities purple. And then for the ease of being able to do a control F within the Sela V interface, we did add a special double dagger character to the front of all of these entities. Um, even at this first stage of the workflow, um, reading through the transcripts can show us that there are other things we actually might want to model. Uh, for example, we quickly realized that community organizations, such as the Central Brooklyn Jazz Consortium, were just as integral to the jazz community in Brooklyn at the time as the music venues and the musicians themselves. Next slide. Uh, this step of the workflow also included logging location and description in information for each of the venues with the ultimate goal to geocode these things um, and then put those coordinates into the wiki base so that when a query is conducted, you can output a map of all of the lost jazz shrines or venues throughout Brooklyn. Sometimes we have really specific address information of uh, like 10 Claver Place for the East, but other times we might only know a pair of cross streets. So. Co-locating all of the venue informations in this one document allows us to harness the transcripts as an entire collection and identify some of the, um, uh, sorry, um, helps us to uh, triangulate and identify some of the last jazz shrines um, that may only describe partially in individual transcripts. So this speaks to the power of the ability of collective memory to redraw the history of a place and its community. Next slide. Once the entities are identified, then the entities are checked against the previously mentioned entity transcript, entity checklist and added to Wikibase if needed. Next, the entities are, the URIs and labels for these entities are added into the new Omeka S instance. Next slide. And while Sela V has been in development, we, development, we've decided to use spreadsheets to prepare which tuples we want to create through Sela V. And these spreadsheets include drop-down menus of all the possible property, qualifier, and qualifier value options. Next slide. This also gives us another time to talk again about the data model. <laughs> Next slide. Um, I'm gonna pass by this slide for now. Um, and just this past week, Zakia and I were able to test Sela V2 with um, Matt Miller, and this allowed us to talk as a group about bugs that we wanted to fix and enhancements we wanted to incorporate. Next slide. Um, the next step will be to export the data from Sela V to Wikibase, but we haven't yet done that because Sela V is not ready. Um, this slide here in the shows, sorry, next slide. This slide here shows the status of all the transcripts. Um, aside from four transcripts, they're on hold. There are eight of the transcripts are fully ready to be processed through Sela V, and 14 of the transcripts are awaiting QA to be ready for Sela V. And three of the transcripts are a bit behind, um, still at the first step of the workflow. 
With the current grant period for our Metro Equity in Action ending October 31st, our goal is to be able to fully process all of these transcripts through CELA Next slide. Um, any, yes, this is the last slide. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we were told 15 minutes, so we we're trying to shorten it into 10. Um, so this slide here is, um, sorry, so information about linking lost jazz shrines can be found at the URL I'm sending right now, um, with the caveat that it is one of our goals to update this website um, since the project is just taking longer as usual. Uh, thank you so much. Looking forward to the discussion.